They also prepare guisos. These are stews where you take a member of the family and you put them in a pig boiler and you pour gasoline on them and then you set a match to them. Ex-cartel members have begun to shed light on the unspeakable horrors that lie beneath the surface of Mexico's underworld. They reveal a world where torture isn't just a means to an end, but a twisted art form designed to break both body and spirit. Intimidation and terror reign supreme as rivals and victims alike are subjected to methods so gruesome that they defy comprehension. These are the 15 most brutal torture methods cartels use on their victims. Number 15. El Guizo or the Stew this is Santiago Meza Lopez, the cartel hitman who dissolved over 300 people in acid. Of all the horrifying torture and murder techniques used by the cartel, this might just be the most disturbing. Lopez, who was arrested in 2009, was famously known as a pioneer for the torture method. His nickname, El Pozolero, means the stew maker, and he didn't get this name by making sweet delicacies. Instead, he was said to have boiled over 300 victims in acid. In his Ensenada ranch, located about 70 miles south of the border, this brutal killer operated under the radar for years. His job was simple, make people disappear without a single trace. When he was finally arrested, Lopez had a lot to say. He confessed to earning $600 every week for helping the cartel to dissolve cadavers. He would fill a drum or box with acid and sodium hydroxide, dump the body in, and begin stirring. This process would go on for eight hours. At this point, only the teeth, nails, and some bone fragments would remain undissolved. These would then be separated from the sludge and burned in an empty lot on his property. Upon his arrest, officers found between 14 to 15,000 remains buried in his ranch. It was like a home of horrors. Lopez would later come face to face with justice in 2012, when he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. By the judgment, he was supposed to be released in 2022. However, members of the community were very afraid of seeing him get out of prison. They needed him behind bars for the safety of the community. So, just before he was supposed to be released, the court declared a new ruling. This time, Lopez was slammed with an extra 30 years for kidnapping and his ties with organized crime. However, he wasn't the only one who used this torture and disposal method. Enter Miguel Angel Trevino Morales the leader of the Los Zetas, who got arrested in 2013. During his reign of terror, Morales was said to have murdered 72 people in the 2010 San Fernando Massacre. Some called him Z-40, others called him a messenger of death, but to everyone, he was the last person you'd want to mess with. His biggest legacy, however, is tied to his torture method known as El Guiso, or the stew. This entails taking a live victim and putting them in a 55-gallon drum. Morales and his henchmen would then either boil them alive or douse them with flammable liquid and set them on fire. By making this abominable stew in the presence of his servants, he was sending a message. Anyone who crossed him was met with death, but he couldn't remain untouchable forever. On July 15, 2013, the Mexican Marines finally arrested Trevino Morales in the state of Nuevo Leon. No single bullet was fired during this infamous arrest. His case has since become a mystery, but it's unlikely he'll ever walk out of prison a free man. Number 14. Feeding to Apex Predators Meet Heriberto Lascano Lascano, also known as El Lasca. Before he was brutally killed in October 2012, Lascano was one of the most sadistic drug lords in all of Mexico. As the leader of the Los Zetas drug cartel, El Lasca was known for using a torture method known as La Paleta, or the popsicle. This meant that the victim would be stripped naked and beaten with a board, sometimes till they died, and sometimes until they almost take their last breaths. There are horrifying stories suggesting that Lascano once tied a man to a tree and beat him until he broke his legs. He then left the man tied to the tree for two to three days until he eventually died. But that's not the end of his brutality. You see, Lascano had a ranch, just like many drug lords. Exotic animals were seen as a status symbol, and they still are till today. But for Lascano, these wild beasts were not just a show of wealth. Instead, the drug lord used these animals as a disposal method. He would starve the lions and tigers for days, and then when he had a victim to punish, 
he would pick him up and throw him in the cage. Within seconds, the big cats would pounce on the victim and maul them to death. The bodies would be devoured immediately, and whatever was left would ultimately get buried. It was a gruesome but effective way to get rid of his enemies without traces. As a matter of fact, even after his death, many of his victims were never identified because they had simply been fed to wild animals. Sometimes these victims were fellow drug lords. Sometimes they were his own men who got caught being tricky with his business. In some cases, the victims were actually innocent citizens who got caught in the crossfire. Before Lascano was later killed, there was a lot of fake news announcing his death. However, the Mexican and United States authorities maintained that their arch-nemesis was not yet conquered. That was until October 7, 2012, when he got murdered during a shootout with the Mexican Marines. At the time, Lascano became the highest-ranking cartel leader to be killed since the start of Mexico's drug war. Number 13. Flaying or Skinning In January 2010, the streets of Los Mochis received a troubling message one early morning. It was the body of 36-year-old Hugo Hernandez, but he wasn't in one piece. Instead, his killers chopped him up to seven pieces as a threat to members of the Juarez drug cartel. The package also included a note that read, Happy New Year, because this will be your last. But this wasn't the most haunting part of the display. You see, Hernandez was allowed the dignity of a simple murder. Instead, his face was cut out of his skull while he was still alive and conscious. Imagine the horror and pain he went through in those final moments, as the sharp knife of the hitman tore the skin right off his face. The face was then sewn onto a soccer ball and left in a plastic bag near City Hall. This singular incident confirmed the level of brutality that goes on in Mexico. Officials claim that Hernandez was originally kidnapped on January 2nd and taken to Sinaloa. At first, the motive for his abduction was not clear. However, after his remains were found days later, it became evident that the cartel was trying to send a deadly message. The rest of his torso was found in a plastic container in one location. In another location, they found his legs and skull. Flaying is a method commonly used by cartel hitmen. Whether they are torturing enemies who got caught on the wrong side or workers trying to cheat their bosses, flaying is considered extremely brutal. Imagine the skin on the body being ripped off while the victim is still conscious. Many times, victims of flaying die due to shock, critical loss of blood or other body fluids. Some may die within a few hours, but the unlucky ones usually last a few days before death. In September 2014, around 100 students were traveling in buses to protest at a conference held by Maria de Los Angeles Pineda Villa. Their plan was to speak on the corruption and discrimination being promoted by the administration. However, they were soon intercepted by the police. A shootout soon ensued, leaving six people dead. After the smoke cleared, the police bundled the rest into marked vehicles. The next morning, there was a dead body on the street. His name was Julio Cesar Mondrion, and his eyes had been gouged out, and his skin flayed off his face. His skull had no single skin on it, and all of this was done while he was alive. Some claim that the corrupt police handed the students over to the Guerreros Unidos crime syndicate. Others claim they were murdered by the cops themselves. But even after over 113 police and gang members have been arrested, the missing students have still not been found. Number 12. Dismemberment. Mexico will always remember the bloody days of May 12th to 13th, 2012. During these gruesome days, 49 people were decapitated and mutilated by members of the Los Zetas. Their bodies were dumped by the roadside near the city of Catareta Jimenez in northern Mexico. But according to an anonymous blog called Blog del Narco, the real death toll was around 68 victims. It was around 4 a.m. when the bodies were first found in San Juan. The whole town was horrified beyond words as they watched these bodies piled up on the roadside. There were 43 men and about six women whose feet, heads, and hands had been cut off. Identifying them was an ordeal no one was prepared for. But for the emergency workers, this was a job they had to do. Many of them would endure PTSD after today's work, but it was just another day in the office in Mexico. The remains of the victims also showed signs of torture, this could mean two things. One, these were actual rival cartel members who were dismembered to send a message. 
Two, these could also be innocent civilians who became collateral damage in this unending war. They were cut into a couple of pieces and then stuffed in plastic bags. The Mexican authorities believe these victims were migrants headed for the United States. But other unofficial sources claim that they were Gulf Cartel members. Nobody has really been able to figure out what exactly transpired here, but the image remains etched in everyone's minds. Dismemberments like this are used in very symbolic manners. When a cartel wants to showcase how truly evil they can be, they would kidnap either innocent civilians or cartel soldiers. By butchering them like animals, these cartels send fear into the community, especially when they're in the middle of a turf war. In this case, the Los Zetas were engaged in a power tussle with the Sinaloa cartel. From small pockets of violence, the whole situation soon disintegrated into a full-blown war. Most of the fighting is about who can secure the most supply of cocaine from South America. Everyone wants more drugs and more money, and they're not afraid to spill more blood just to earn it. Soon after the infamous massacre, over 50 police officers were deployed to protect the municipality of Cattareta. For over seven hours, the highway was blocked off by federal agents and state police officers. On May 15, 2012, a video surfaced on YouTube showing how the Los Zetas members disposed of the butchered bodies. The video was said to have been recorded by an anonymous man who could be heard instructing his men for about seven minutes. The video showed how the bodies were transported in a dump truck to the highway. The cartel also placed a banner around the area, warning their rivals and the police from ever coming against them or else they would receive the same fate. Eight Gulf cartel members were later caught and detained over the incident. However, the Mexican government still maintains that the massacre was carried out by the Los Zetas rather than the Gulf cartel. Number 11. Beheading by Chainsaw The year was 2011 when this horrific video went viral showing two alleged members of the Sinaloa cartel being beheaded with a chainsaw. It was a gory footage and it instantly went viral. The two victims were Felix Games Garcia on the left and Barnabas Games Castro, his uncle, on the right. Before their execution, the two men admitted to working for Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. They described their responsibilities as halcones, or sometimes riding in convoys when asked to do so. The hitmen held these condemned prisoners for nearly six minutes, just like in their previous videos. After the interview was over, they then proceeded to murder them in the most gruesome way possible. No one really knows who these killers are, or the criminal organization they belong to but their methods were nothing short of ruthless. Before he was slaughtered, the uncle had a message for those who might decide to enter the dark side of the drug cartels. He warned them to think well before becoming a rat. He reminded them that once you take that step, there is no going back. The uncle had previously said that the drug cartels did not pay much. As a matter of fact, he only got paid about $21 for the last work he did for them. To be honest, that doesn't sound like a job to die for. But unfortunately, he was just about to die for this job. Perhaps it was because they were heavily drugged already, but these men didn't kick or scream throughout the ordeal. The uncle was the first to be slaughtered. You could see him react a little as the chainsaw tears through his throat, cutting through flesh and bone to separate his head from his body. For those strong enough to stomach the gore, you could see the blood flow endlessly but he never flicked throughout the slaughter. The young nephew was next. The only difference was that his own death didn't come from a chainsaw. Instead, he was slaughtered with a knife by another Sicario. Although he also didn't flinch at first, as the knife tore through his throat, he made a last attempt to scream out, but his vocal cords had already been cut. All you could hear was this faint whimpering sound. This was the final breath of a young man who wasn't ready to die. Cartels often murder their enemies this way and broadcast it for the world to see. There are reports that even El Chapo has beheaded several men using a chainsaw. Sometimes they manage to squeeze out extra information, and other times, they simply use this method to dispose of their enemies and old friends. Number 10. Cannibalism Have you ever wondered why cartel sicarios and hitmen operate like they have no soul? Well, everything starts with their training, because before anyone could become a cartel hitman, he needs to lose the little light of humanity left within him. And what better way to kill a man's soul than to force him to feed on the flesh of another man? A couple of years ago, 
a video got leaked on the internet showcasing what goes on in a cartel terror school. This is where the foot soldiers are trained to carry out deadly attacks on their enemies. Some described the video as a sort of Olympics of cruelty and sadism. The first lesson here is to teach the new recruits how to cut people. The experienced Sicarios show them how to skin people alive and keep them from dying. They teach them how to decapitate a person while still keeping them alive. They would often use human targets for these lessons. Sometimes this would happen during sessions of interrogations. A Sicario might cut off a finger or two from a prisoner. These body parts don't just go to waste. Instead, they are actually fed to the new recruits to toughen them up. This is especially common among the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, also known as the CJNG. These recruits have to take this abominable meal in the presence of their superiors. If anyone throws up during the process, a Sicario would pick up the severed finger and force the new soldier to eat his own vomit. From here, they move on to bigger body parts. They force them to hunt down their victims, skin them, and cook their bodies. Something snaps in the minds of these young boys, and they never remain the same. This way, the Sicarios become emotionless killing machines. In some cases, the cartels even force the victims to eat their own flesh or die. It's a horrific form of torture that helps cement their terrible reputation. Number 9. Psychological Warfare Apart from mutilating bodies and turning people into soup, drug cartels also devised means of messing with their enemies' minds. Using propaganda, scare tactics, and complete media control, the top dogs in the business rule with fear. Their greatest weapon is the hold they have on the ordinary Mexicans. This also allowed them to gain more infamy throughout the nation. They also pay artistes known as narco corridos to sing their praises. These artistes are often paid heavy amounts, but they do this job at the risk of their life. They also display banners and posters announcing horror and terror on the people who try to cross them. These banners are often accompanied with bodies. The more bodies compiled on the streets, the more the people fear the cartels. This also works well as a recruitment strategy because most young people would rather be on the side of the most powerful cartels. So the more brutality is displayed on the streets, the more people run to the cartel for protection. When a rival cartel member gets caught up on the wrong side of the gun, their fate is often close to hell. Sometimes they don't die violently. Sometimes they're locked in a cage and deprived of food for days. In other cases, they are kept in solitary confinement, fed, but left alone for months. Imagine the mental state of such a person who's forced to stare at a wall 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for months. This tactic is often used on cartel prisoners who refuse to give up their secrets. Unfortunately, even after they reveal the information the cartel demands, they would still be killed and buried in an unmarked grave. Number 8. Tizo, Waterboarding with a Twist In the world of espionage, Fueled by the desire to extract information, a couple of scientists invented a terror known as waterboarding. Imagine drowning without being submerged in water. This is exactly what waterboarding feels like. But the cartels take things to a whole level. You see, in a normal case of waterboarding, the victim's face is completely covered with a thin or thick veil. The victim is kept in a captive position, and water is poured on the veiled face endlessly. The torturers often focus the flow of water on the breathing passages. This would cause an immediate gag reflex, which creates a drowning sensation in the captive. While others would use water, though, there is a different method called Tizo, where the water is replaced with carbonated water. This intensifies the gag reflex, increasing the intensity of the drowning sensation. If the flow of carbonated water continues for a prolonged period, the subject would die from asphyxiation, during the trial of El Chapo, it was revealed that the drug lord had used this method to murder quite a number of people. Many died during these torture sessions, and those who made it out alive were killed through other means. Number 7. Hanging When the cartel wants to scare a family, they murder a person. But when they truly want to send a message to a city, they publicly hang dozens of people on the opposing sides. Back in November 2021, a city in the central state of Zacatecas received one of these horrific messages. Residents woke up in the morning and found 10 bodies, 
nine of them hanging from an overpass. These were grown men from rival gangs, and their lives had just been cut short to deter any form of resistance from their gang. The tenth body was found lying on the pavement. From all indications, it appeared that many of the deceased were killed on the spot by hanging, while others, on the other hand, looked like they were brought there dead already. The Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation cartels have been battling for control over this state, and one side is clearly winning. The reason the state was so important was because it serves as a key transit point for pushing fentanyl to the U.S. border. Unfortunately, many lives have been lost to keep business moving here. The hanging bodies were accompanied by banners announcing the reason these men were murdered. It also featured a warning to the rival cartels not to dare to avenge the attack. Number 6. Cartel Kitchens Stepping down a cartel kitchen, you will find bloody handprints on the walls. The floors are covered with stained clothes. There are plastic cable ties everywhere. Machetes are flung around every corner. And there beneath a thick blanket of ash is a crunch of bones. This is the killing spot of the Mexican cartel. In this unholy place, over 60,000 people have disappeared in northern Veracruz. Their remains were never found. This horrific episode began in 2011 when the Los Zetas cartel took over the ranch. Their goal was to use the space to incinerate their victims. In their local language, that meant to literally cook their victims. Twelve of these kitchens were later discovered. Inside, officers found fragments of human bones, teeth, and nails lost in the gray ash. Of the over 60,000 people killed and cooked here, only six have found justice in a federal court. The rest were buried in a gooey soup and their memories were permanently erased from the earth. Number 5. Burning Alive Meet Maria Santos Gorostiera, a Mexican politician who stood against the cartels during her time in office. Maria served as mayor of Ticacheo in Michoacán between 2008 and 2011. Throughout this period, she survived two assassination attempts, but this didn't stop her from fighting the cartels. Unfortunately, she was eventually brutally murdered and burned alive in November 2012. How did Maria become a Mexican hero, though? The story begins in 1976 in a small town called Tiquicheo. This was the year Maria was born, and her early days were spent in the drug-infested streets of Mexico. She always wanted to make a difference in the nation. So after earning a PhD in medicine, she joined the Institutional Revolutionary Party. This was the beginning of her political career. After surviving two attempts on her life, Maria's time in office was now coming to an end. To keep the little protection she had, she decided to run for the Chamber of Deputies of the Congress of the Union. Unfortunately, she couldn't get the support she needed, so she returned to the office as mayor. She was eventually forced to resign, and that was when she lost police protection. Her first husband had initially been killed during an attack in October 2009. Some people claim he was also burned alive. On that fateful day in 2011, Mari was driving her child to school around 8.30 a.m. Suddenly, her car was ambushed by a car in the city of Morelia. She was immediately hauled from the car and physically assaulted as horrified onlookers watched on. These people described how she begged for her child to be left alone before the armed men took her away. At first, her family thought the kidnappers wanted a ransom, but this was a different kind of kidnapping. Eight days later, Maria's body was found on a roadside in San Juan Tararameo. She had been stabbed, battered, and her wrist and ankle were bound. According to experts, she spent her final seconds burning alive as a symbol of how far the cartel is willing to go to protect its secrets. Number 4. Flame Torture El Chapo might be the most famous drug lord of this generation, and it wasn't just his money or even the amount of drugs he moved that earned this reputation. It was the barbarism he and the cartel inflicted on their many victims. A young woman named Milagros tells a deeply unsettling story about El Chapo. She claimed she and her husband were kidnapped by the cartel. The first thing they did was burn her husband alive with a blowtorch. It was a horrifying way to go, but for the cartel hitmen, this was just another day in the office. Although she eventually made it out alive, Milagros never remained the same. You could see the sunken space in her hollow eyes. It was as though her soul had been sucked out. In certain confirmed cases, El Chapo was said to have burnt his enemies alive using a blowtorch. Sometimes he started at their feet to extract information. But by the time he's done, all that would remain is a lifeless, 
half-burnt carcass. Number three, injecting with drugs. There are two main reasons why a cartel would inject their victims. One, sometimes prisoners in torture chambers are injected with morphine or adrenaline to keep them awake throughout the torture. This means that when a person is about to be decapitated, the cartel wants him to remain conscious. This way, he or she would feel every bit of pain in the process. Two, cartels often use psychoactive drugs as a tool for extracting information. By giving these captives an excess supply of these drugs, they would be inflicted with distress, pain, anxiety, or even psychological disturbance. Many of them never recovered from this experience. Sometimes these captives are forced to become addicted to the injected drugs. This way, they would remain under the leash of the cartel for as long as they stay dependent on the drug. In other cases, these victims are injected with truth serums to force them to reveal the information the captors require. In more cases than not, these victims end up dying from their addiction. Number two, drowning in acid. When these three film students took a trip to Guadalajara for a college project, they could never have imagined this would be the final trip of their lives. As they traveled through the city, looking for a perfect location, they met a 24-year-old man. He was an aspiring rapper with a YouTube channel that was doing quite well. His social media following was in hundreds of thousands. At first glance, it looks like he was set for a great future. Unfortunately, though, the students got tangled in a complicated web with the rapper's boss. What started as a film project quickly turned into a tragedy after the rapper was instructed to get rid of the bodies of the slain students. They had been brutally murdered, and the cartel wanted the operation to be untraceable so they paid the rapper a few dollars to dissolve these students in acid. He came back after two days after the acid had done its work. The drain valves were opened to release the fluid into the storm drain. Any remaining sludge was dumped into the fields. As for the students, their remains were never given the dignity of a burial. The rapper was later identified to be Palma Gutierrez, the cook. He was eventually caught, and his fate currently hangs in the balance. Number 1. Beatings During the trial of former drug lord El Chapo Guzman, one of his former henchmen had a few revelations to share. He claimed that El Chapo himself was involved in the torture and killing of his rivals. His method required that no evidence be left behind during any operations. This meant that sometimes he had to get down and dirty, joining his men in the bloody act of torture. In some cases, El Chapo was said to have beaten a pair of rival gang members to a pulp. He then shot both of them in the head before ordering his men to burn their remains. Sources also claimed that he loved to torture his victims with an electric iron. Other times, he would burn their skins with his cigarette lighter. He would then put the prisoner on ice, leaving him in a shed for days while his wounds began to fester. Sometimes these prisoners would be left to decompose while they were still alive. He would also instruct his men to drag these rival members across the floor while their skin bleeds all over the floor. His reign brought never-before-seen violence to Mexico, and many citizens are glad he's finally locked behind a thick wall. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.